Hello Sagittarius, welcome to Dove and Serpent Tarot. My name is Paul. If Sagittarius is your sun, moon, or rising sign, this is your tarot card reading. Please hit the like button, leave a comment, consider subscribing to the channel, especially if this reading resonates with you. Uh, it is totally free, doesn't cost you anything. If there is anything you would like me to pray over, or meditate upon, or send positive energy toward, please let me know. Now this is going to be a general reading, so try to be open and receptive to whatever may come through during our time together. I am merely the messenger. And I ask you to connect directly with each of these cards and use your own intuition to take you beyond the details that I might provide. And remember, Sagittarius, that the most important part of any tarot reading is you. And the Five of Cups, there's some emotional um, turbulence going on right now, okay? Um, I feel like you're gonna, I feel like something's gonna make you feel a certain kind of way, all right? This is a, a wave of emotion that really, I think the message is let it flow back out again. Um, it's not gonna feel that great, but let it go. It's kind of the idea that it's not that serious. Don't hang on to it. Don't grab onto this wave. Okay, let's put this into some context. I feel like this is a message that really, really needs to reach you, okay? Now we've got a three. It's going to hit something from your past, right? And it might be really an ex kind of see them on the internet or something, um, or, or they, they try to reach out to you. Something happens in your life that brings up this very old memory so this is an old memory. Don't don't recreate this entire situation and um, kind of ruin your day over it, right? We've got to be ready for this and let it flow back out again. Just let it come, let it go. Don't let it affect your stability. This is like you know that there's a storm coming. Well, you better shut your windows and, and try to protect your, your location here, okay? Don't let this event disturb your stability. It's not, if anything, this is something that triggers something from the past. It doesn't mean that it is as devastating right now in the present in reality as you might feel, okay? We've got the fool energy, okay? We got the six of pentacles. We've got the Libra justice or adjustment energy. This is like, you know, remain calm, remain calm professional, okay? Um, seven of Swords, ah, Magician. Okay, Prince of Pentacles and a Two of Pentacles. Um, I wonder if you have, like, I don't know, if there, I kind of feel like there's an upcoming, like, court date, right? There's an upcoming, like, official day for something, and it's going to be an emotional day, okay? And the idea here is not to react emotionally. Remain professional, remain stoic, remain kind of um, equal, remain balanced. Um, don't, um, don't let this uh, kind of affect your equilibrium, okay? Because this is a, a situation where it's, it's really important for you to not show these feelings, not act on these feelings, okay? I don't know if this is, maybe this is a court thing, maybe you're going to have to see... Um, an ex in court, maybe it's a divorce proceedings. I don't know what you've got coming up. Um, but it is not going to be, it's not going to be extraordinarily pleasant. But with the Six of Pentacles up here, it is something that's leading to your very best situation. It's leading to success. Maybe this is some kind of arbitration or mediation where you've, you're trying to um, get out of a contract or something, let's say, right? Um, or this is that meeting with HR coming up. You know, or this is where you offer your resignation somewhere, right? It's an emotional situation. It is something where you've got to be professional and it's going to be for the absolute very best, okay? It doesn't feel like that at the moment. I feel like you're nervous. I feel like we have these mixed emotions about it, All right? We got this Five of Cups, which the Five of Cups is kind of this, maybe an alternation even between um, feeling really excited and really good. And then the next moment we feel like, oh, I've done something absolutely stupid, you know? Um, 
something absolutely foolish. Now, if we just look at these two major arcana cards, I can see that you're kind of going back and forth. Um, we feel like, okay, this is like, this is the best thing. This is really a smart, responsible, very discerning thing, right? Like we really feel like a genius over here. But then sometimes we're like, ah, man, I feel like I just made the biggest blunder of my life. All right. So you might be vacillating between these two things. But what we're aiming toward, of course, is the six. The six of pentacles, absolute material success. This is the light at the end of the tunnel where things are just going to be in harmony. Things are going to be good, right? So you've got something coming up. And I feel like you already know it's coming up, but maybe you don't quite know. You know, maybe this is something that there's no set date, but it's, it's going to happen. And you've got to try to react the right way to it. You've got to try to be, whatever happens, be professional. Okay, be respectful. Even if the other person's not. Even if they're looking like a fool, doesn't mean you have to. Okay. Spirit's also telling me that there's some, like the job that you have um, right now. I don't know if this, if this is the one you're leaving or whatever it is. But the job that you have now, there was something really weird about how you got that job. Right? Some sort of a synchronicity or some sort of a random accident or something. Some kind of a fluke, right? With how you got this, the current job that you have. Okay. Um, I feel like you're transcending a situation here. I feel like if this is the job you have, you're on to better things. Even if you're not planning on leaving, even if this is like something that's unexpected, you're on to better things. We're going from a four of pentacles to a six. Okay. Going from a four to, four to a six. We are transcending a particular situation here. And it maybe doesn't feel that good when it happens. It starts to really kind of mess with us. But we have to remember that this is for the best, that we have these higher goals in mind. This is the outcome you want. So determine whether you should be a fool or you should be a, um, a justice kind of card, you know? Or what kind of energy is appropriate in this situation. We don't want to jeopardize the foundation that we have we want to be able to transcend this. Now, there is this idea that if, if, this is, um, if this is something this turbulent, that it's going to affect our foundation in some way. We think of a storm, yeah, we're going to prepare for it, but we're still, some stuff's still going to get broken, you know. So this might be something that we're trying to cling to, we're trying to cling to this, to, to this security and then when it gets threatened or it gets taken away or the universe brings about some sort of change, we're going to cry against it. We're going to beg. We're going to plead. We don't want to let go of this. So in some way, you know, we kind of have to. If we're going to get to the next level in our life, we got to let go of this. But this right now feels like a safe, stable, secure thing. Well, this is going to be even better. Okay, this is going to be even better. Um, now, what's, what's the gossip right now? Spirit's telling me that there's some kind of gossip going around that's like a kind of a significant thing for you. I don't know if it's happening in the workplace or this was, um, I don't know. I, I almost feel like somebody was kind of, somebody was working against you or something, or there was like something was said about you that wasn't really true. And then it's kind of created this whole thing. I don't know what, I don't know what that is exactly. Um, but I do know that this entire situation is bringing up a lot of memories. Here's that Three of Swords. And this, this is something getting activated in us from our history. And we might not even realize that the emotions we're feeling now aren't directly a reaction to the present situation. It's kind of being amplified by that history, by that past. Yeah. And that's what we have to be aware of, and that's what we have to keep kind of under control. We have to keep that in balance because we're going to have this overreaction to something. This, this reaction is not going to be appropriate. It's not, uh, it's not in equal measure to the situation itself. What we're reacting to is that history, that memory, that kind of the recreation of all that past energy kind of coming up and amplifying this current situation. Okay. And that's very important for us to realize, and that way we can stay balanced. Let's respond to the situation that is right in front of us. Let's be aware of how we're being kind of 
compelled to react in this big way, that's not the appropriate way. We have to, it has to be the right measure, the right balance, right, of, of our response. It has to be equal to the, the situation, it has to be appropriate, okay? And this card's saying that you're the judge of that, nobody else, right? But we want to make sure that we're reacting in a way that's going to help us get to the goals we want. It's going to help us get to the, the Six of Pentacles, okay? Um, oh, the mystery card. Let's select the mystery card. Bonus card, confirmation card. This is one random card from the Smith Waite Tarot. And this is going to go right over here. We're going to put Robo Duck, a.k.a. Howard the Duck, a.k.a. not Howard Stern, right there on top of that card. And we're not going to look at that card until the very end, uh, but it will tie everything together. It will give us the confirmation that we need. If at any point during this reading you feel like you know what that card is, I want you to put your prediction down in the comments. Let's do it together. Let's make it a group exercise in intuition. All right. I think it'll be a good idea. All right. Let's look around the room a little bit. We've got, of course, major, major, major. And I like the major arcana energies. Look at this. Fool, justice to the magician. Well, the magician has to be professional, but has to be a little bit of a showman too, has to be a little bit, uh, you know, charismatic, a little bit flamboyant. You need that showmanship. You need that risk take. You need to be a little bit of just the kind of um, the jester a little bit, right? I've never seen a magic show. I've never been to like Vegas or anything and seen like a, you know, a big, I mean, when I was a kid, obviously, like the well, in school or something, but I've never seen the big show, you know. But I imagine there's a little bit of humor, a little bit of mystery. There's a professionalism, but there's also this kind of wonder. There's also this kind of magic about the whole thing, right? I mean, it's a magic show. Um, so if we think about blending the fool and the adjustment card, we kind of get somebody who's a little bit like this magician. Yeah. And that's, that's quite interesting to me because there's this there, at first, there was this dichotomy between, well, I don't want to be the fool. I want to be smart. I want to do the right thing. I want to have, I want to have an equal um, response, a proportionate response to the situation where the fool just kind of lets everything go, whatever it feels. It just acts on the kind of the, the present moment. If it's a big gesture, it's a big gesture. If it doesn't even register sometimes, and it doesn't even, it, it, you know, it's, um, it doesn't have a plan. The fool doesn't have a self to really be affected by any of these things. It just deals with experiences in real time. It's a zero card. Nothing sticks, right? So we need a little bit of that, a little bit of this nonchalance, a little bit of this, maybe nonchalance is the word. Yeah. A little bit of this idea of nothing sticking to us. It's almost like not a care in the world. It's almost like completely empty, right? And I think that's a, that's a good way of looking at it, empty of these memories. It's not affecting us now, right? We're dealing with this situation in real time, and that's the way it goes, you know? Uh, Spirit's telling me something about singing karaoke. This has been coming through a lot lately. I don't, I don't remember if it's been for your readings or not, Sagittarius, but something about karaoke, something about you on the stage singing along to a song or something. Yeah. I don't know what the connection is there. We'll get to the bottom of it eventually, but it's kind of a fun thing. And that's something the fool would do. The fool wouldn't think twice about it. The fool wouldn't then bring up all of the memories, three of swords, all of the memories of, of every time it's ever been embarrassed and say, oh, I'm not going to do the karaoke. I remember what it feels like to be embarrassed and I don't want to do that again. Um, and so there's, there's a big lesson in this fool energy about not letting this kind of history affect us in the present moment, not letting it um, inhibit what we might feel we really want to do, you know, um, to, you know, maybe to better our lives, but just to experience being alive. You know, you really do want to go up and sing karaoke, but you're not going to if you're so worried about, about being embarrassed because that you know what it's like to be embarrassed. You have a lot of memories of being embarrassed. You don't want to do it again. If we didn't have that process, then it's someone 
gives you a microphone and you just you're right up on stage with a big smile doing it and maybe everyone's gonna laugh at you maybe you're terrible at singing but it's fun we don't care right people laugh at us it doesn't stick we get this kind of uh, this five of, of cups feeling about things and maybe this maybe this isn't a, a job situation or anything like that maybe this is an opportunity for you to do something to transcend your life go from four to six to transcend your kind of your home base right now um, and if we would just be a little bit more foolish then this wouldn't bother us in this kind of negative worrisome embarrassed kind of way and we would just do it right we would we would just do it now what's the funny thing that happened in the hotel room spirits telling me to ask about about the the funny hotel stay I don't know if you uh, you showed up at the hotel it was the wrong day or something or I don't know if they gave you they gave you a different room that you didn't they didn't give you the right room or something like this. I don't know if you got locked out of the hotel or something funny about a hotel room. Yeah. And I'm smiling because these details come in. They, it doesn't seem like they really mean anything in context, right? They mean something to you. If it's meant for you, you'll know, all right? And if it's not, don't worry about it. And leave it for the next person. Um, but it's kind of funny when I'm, I'm in the middle of something and I, I get that kind of message from spirit and it's just like, ask about the hotel. Okay, so that's what I'm doing. I'm asking you, what's the hotel thing? What is that all about? Yeah. Um, the other side of the fool, of course, is this, and everything sticks here. Everything goes into this is the card of karma. So it's really, in some ways, the exact opposite of the fool. Nothing sticks over here. There is no karma. We're free from karma. Um, over here, there is. Everything sticks in the, the, everything goes into one of these, it's either into the positive or negative memory bucket, right? And so everything, we're, we're trying to find the right response to a situation. We're trying to be measured and we're trying to be calculated and we're trying to really do what we think is the right thing. So we're relying heavily on our memories. Okay, I've been in a situation like this before. What's a way that I can be, react that will give me the best chances of uh, success here, right? Because that's what we want, right? Success, six of pentacles. Uh, but it's hard to really have that kind of discourse or function in our minds when we have a lot of this kind of stuff that we're attached to that's giving us some biased information, all right? Biased information. Um, Spirits tell me that you're a very disciplined person. And I see that with the, the Justice card too, very, very disciplined kind of energy. It's very, almost very formal, very logical, right? But I feel like there are times where um, you worry that you're not being spontaneous, you're not being free enough. Yeah, there is this duality here. There's a real dualism between the Fool and the Adjustment card, okay? Um, you know, sometimes the fool does need to adjust its behavior. Uh, sometimes we need to adjust our behavior the other way and let loose a little bit more. Not let things bother us so much, trusting in the universe that whatever's happening, it's going to be all right. All right? Because change, there is a change coming in your life. And I think this is a very important message. I think it is meant to find you right now. To prepare you for when this thing happens how you're going to react and respond to it. All right, let's go to the path of the serpent. And as we do this, I would like to ask for your subscription. If you haven't subscribed yet, uh, please do. It is totally free. It doesn't cost anything at all. And it helps out the channel. I really do appreciate that. Okay. So we start with the seven of swords down here, and this is your general energy. This is kind of the, um, this is that internal kind of debate that we feel like we've got a plan. Okay, we've got that Ace of Swords in the middle. We know what we're going to do. And then we get all these other ideas and we start to have these doubts. We start to have these worries. We start try. We start kind of, you know, overanalyzing the relationship here. And we start thinking, well, am I being too much fool? Am I being too much? It's kind of a, it's kind of an anxiety, right? And, um, you know, uh, with my kind of, neurodivergence, I can relate to that in the way of um, 
sometimes in the situation, we're not reacting to the situation directly. We're reacting to how we feel, right? So when you're in this kind of serious moment, right? You're talking to your boss or something. And instead of focusing on that and letting that exchange happen, we're worried about like, you know, am I staring? Or what are my hands doing? Or am I holding my body weird? Or how did I comb my hair today? Do I look silly? Uh, all these different things. We're responding to how we feel rather than just letting that flow of information, that, f that exchange, that spiritual exchange happen. Yeah. So the seven, um, the seven of, of swords here, there's, there's some communication that needs to happen for you. Okay, and I don't know exactly who this is going to involve, if it is some sort of a boss or some sort of a legal or professional kind of matter. It feels like there's a meeting or something, you know what I mean? Kind of has that, that meeting vibe. Um, <clears throat> and I, I wonder if it is regarding some sort of gossip or some sort of misunderstanding. Okay, and I wonder if that's kind of what the meeting is about and you're feeling kind of nervous about it already, right? I'm, I'm thinking that's kind of what's, what's going on here. Um, the way through it really is to be the magician. Now, the magician has to understand what it is that you want the audience to perceive. You know, the magician doesn't start from the beginning, starts from the end. You start from the end result. What is the change that you would like to have happen? Well, we want to transcend. We want to follow our purpose. We want to succeed, of course. But what is the end result? What is the change that you would like to see happen in this situation? The magician starts from that. The magician starts from the end result and then works backward. Okay, how do I create that reality? You know? Sorry, I had to hit the cough button there. The, the magician wants to, um, you know, well, in a way, wants to impress the audience, right? Wants to perform this trick, this illusion, this magic. You know, knows what they want the audience to perceive. And then figures out how to make it happen, how to create it. Who do I need to be? What do I need to be? What's the vibe, right? Um, I feel like you are a very good communicator when we can get out of ourselves. So what kind of things in your life take you out of yourself, take you out of this? This to me feels like a heart and a mind that are just anxious, worried. It could be really, there could be, it could be a lot of anxiety, like naturally, you know? But this is really us stuck in our head and heart, our heart mind, and not allowing us to really respond to the situation appropriately, what we consider appropriate. Right, which means leading us to our goal with kind of an effortlessness and ease to it, a nice flow. Right? But I think you are a good communicator, but I think we get stuck in our heart and mind. We get stuck in our anxiety. So what can we do to help us get out of that? Okay, That's, that's a question that you've got to ask yourself. Uh, because when you're in your magician mode, you are, uh, like I said, a great communicator, eloquent, charismatic, very intelligent, knowledgeable, right? You're a master. Um, and I don't know if you, may, do you do some sort of performance in your life? You know, um, where is it that you can activate your magician? Because I feel like you activate it somewhere. But it's then it's like when it's this work thing or this meeting or this court thing, it's not there. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like this is a totally different energy. We have to find a way to be the magician in that situation too. Now, you could be like the lead singer of a band. You could be an actor. You get on stage and you're just, you, this part of you comes out. But then back in real life, we're in this meeting at work or we're in this court thing and it's just like, it's completely different. We gotta find a way to activate this. How do we activate this magician within ourselves, right? Well, first, we, we realize what the outcome is that we want, figure out what we need to do to get that, and then we've got to tap into something. We've got to tap into that psychic, that mysterious part of ourselves. Whatever gets activated when you do, maybe you do go sing karaoke, right? Maybe, that's, maybe it's not an anxiety for that. Maybe that's where you really just, you let loose and you're not worried about it and things just flow and you're able to do it. But then... In our real life, we're awkward, we, you know, we're in our anxiety, right? Something like that. 
I don't know if it's necessarily you singing on stage, but it's something that it flips a switch where you can activate this kind of charisma. Um, anyway, next card is the the Builder. This is the Prince of Pentacles. And this is what you are trying to do with your life, is continue to build. This is you really, like, committed. You're sh you show up every day, right? You show up every day, you do the work, and you try to always be growing, 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 doing more and more and more, getting better and better and better. Um, this is the difficulty here, I think. And the difficulty really is, I kind of think it's this idea of showing up every day. And um, and I think this is this is a good thing because what it kind of feels like is we're doing a lot of work to maintain this status quo. It's like a lot of effort, a lot of commitment. You're putting in work, you're staying, and maybe this is a work thing. Maybe you're putting in extra hours, you're showing up every day, never taking a day off, never called in sick, never complained, nothing. You're the model employee, but you're stuck in this four of pentacles. It's like they're, it's just the bare minimum. Maybe this whole thing is about you going in and asking for a raise, you know? Because you deserve to transcend this. You are that model kind of employee, and what you're worried about is that they're going to give you more to do, but not pay you more, right? That's kind of the situation. Maybe this isn't work. Maybe it's not a career thing. Maybe it's not a money thing. But this is the energy that I'm feeling. That you don't mind doing more, but you want more for it. You want more in return. Uh, and part of the fear is that you're going to get more to do. There's going to be more responsibility, more energy, more exertion, but there's going to be less coming in. And that creates an imbalance, right? You got more going out than you got coming in. Something's wrong there. Okay. It should at least be even, you know. Uh, so we're, we're looking for changes. You're, you're ready for things to change in your life. Okay. And maybe you feel like you would be a much better like manager, supervisor, boss here in this situation. Um, this is very, very interesting energy. I say we look at the mystery card. I'm also getting an A name. I don't know who the A person is. Um, I don't know if it's a male or a female, but I'm getting an A name. Could be Adam, Alice. Uh, I don't know. Well, those are very basic names, but let's look at the mystery card. Let's see uh, what this could be. I want to see, uh, obviously, some kind of um, more harmony or abundance. We, I know we've got the six of pentacles, but can we get a six of cups? I mean, come on. All right. Can we get a six of cups? Can we get, um, well, a six of swords might be really what we need. The resolution, the balance, the harmony of heart and mind. We're not worried anymore. Right? We're not anxious. We're not in this energy. We've got, we're restoring the harmony in here. So I'm thinking six, either six of cups or six of swords. If you have a prediction, put it down in the comments. Oh, well, it's the death card. Um, this is a, a, a slow kind of gradual transformation. This is also a card too that's really about letting go of stuff. Yeah. The uh, the fool is the fool, yeah. But the fool has some good qualities that we would like to emulate. The fool lives their life like there's no tomorrow, like there was no yesterday, right? There's no, there's no fear with the fool. It's just experience. It's a zero. Things go in one ear and out the other, right? But in, in a good way, obviously. Uh, nothing sticks. Right, so things come in and things get get let go of immediately, and that's kind of like the death card too, because the death card is that infinite here and now. That's that that infinite moment between um, life and life, between life and rebirth, right? Between the past and the future is that infinite moment right now. The future doesn't exist. The past doesn't exist. It's just what is flowing through us at the moment. These cards are stationary. Reality flows through them, flows through our point of view. It's not our consciousness moving through the universe. It's the universe moving through us. 
So it's up to us what's, what sticks and what doesn't. Yeah. So a lot of this death card is about processing stuff, letting it go. Keeping what matters, keeping what we need, letting go of the rest. Yeah. Anyway, we're going to do an extended reading as well if you want to stick around for that. There's a link up here, back there, and down there. There's one everywhere. Uh, new readings for Sagittarius, usually Wednesdays and Sundays. I'm here every day. You can come on back, see me tomorrow. Uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, please do. Um, it's totally free. It doesn't cost you anything. Leave a comment for me. Let me know how you're doing. Let me know where in the world you're watching from. I want you to know that you are the most important part of Dove and Serpent Tarot. I thank you and I love you. And we're all in this together.